Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Here to do a new problem as part of the Go Math 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 34 on the CSET Multiple Subjects Practice Test, the CSET 2. This is the Math and Science exam in California. This is a great problem. You see these types of problems all the time on, on intermediate um, math teacher certification exams. So we're going to jump right into this. You'll notice here it's going to involve taking a mixed number and dividing it by a fraction. So we could say this is one and a half divided by a fourth. And it's going to be a, a definitely a fraction problem as well as, you know, word problems. We're going to go through strategies like model drawing to work through the, this type of problem. Let's, let's read it over. It says, uh, which of the following illustrates the operation? One and a half divided by one fourth. And then we have some scenarios. Now take a moment and read over each scenario. Read it over first, very, very carefully. Pause the video, unpause the video so we can talk about it. When we have a problem like this, we first have to look at this number sentence here and have an idea of what that looks like. One trick is to think of whenever you see division by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So whenever you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal would be, one. the reciprocal of one-fourth would flip it to get the reciprocal, and that would be four over one, so it would just be four. So really, we're doing one and a half times four, which would actually get you six. Well, that's great. At least I know what the answer is. And I'm looking for a scenario where the answer is going to match up to 6. But knowing how to get there and, and really understanding what that's saying are two totally different things. So let's do model drawing to help demonstrate what exactly this is saying. Just to give that visual understanding, really important that you have this. What I'm saying is 1 and a half times 4, it's like it's like saying, if I were to draw a picture to visualize it, I have one, one and a half, and I've got four of these. Each of them is one and a half. So I could be like 1.5, 1.5, I guess I might save room. And collectively, when I add all these up, they get to six. Here's another way of looking at this. This reads 1.5 divided by a fourth. Well, a fourth core fraction I know is equal to 25%, right? Okay, now let's expand. Let's, let's, make, let's make this equivalent to a fraction with 100 in the denominator like this. Well, what would go on the top? I'm, I'm just making it equal. I want to make this an equivalent to this right here. Well, if 25% or one-fourth is, is on the bottom, I multiply this by 4 to get to the 100. I do the same thing to this one and get to the top. Okay. I've just shown you three ways to get to the six. S try sticking with the model drawing because I think it's the best way where you'll at least kind of have some sense uh, visually, you know, how to, how to visualize it. We're going to use a model drawing strategy on all these other examples. So let's look at each case, uh, case study. We'll do this one right here. I'll read it over and then we'll create the model drawing, see what answer we get. We're looking for an answer that, that gets to six, right? It says here, A. Sean has a pound and a half of popcorn. He wants to divide it equally into four bags. How many pounds should he put in each bag? All right, so let's, let's imagine here a big cup of popcorn for Sean. I do the model drawing, and what do I say about this? Well, this is equal to 1.5 pounds of delicious popcorn. Now, he's dividing it into equal bags of four, which means he's going to be taking this big packet of popcorn and dividing it into four smaller chunks. Now, um, 
it's going to be one fourth. It's going to be it's going to be um, this divided by four. And so the number sentence for this one would be one and a half divided by four. It's going to be small. These values are going to be small, smaller than one point five. You don't need to go any further. If, if you can just visualize that whatever these chunks are are going to be smaller than 1.5 and know that that is not going to equal 6, then you're done and you can move on. So we go to B. We're going to do the same thing. Now you read it over and I'll read it over, but you read it over too so that you can we can try and draw a picture that helps us model the math behind it. It says here, the trip to a beach is usually uh, an hour and a half drive. Repairs to the freeway have increased the travel time by a quarter, by uh, a quarter or 25%. How long will the trip take? Okay. Well, normally, normally this is the regular trip. This is the trip, normal trip, and it's taking an hour and a half. But now we have to add on 25%. So I might do this. This is uh, an hour and a half, and this is 100% of the normal travel time. But now I have to add on an additional amount, 25%. So that in total, I'm going to be dealing with an amount that's equal to 125% of the original amount. Now at this point, I'm thinking, you know, it's not going to be six hours. It's going to be 25% in addition to the hour and a half. It's going to get me another answer. Just from my model drawing, I can kind of see, hey, it's just a 25% increase. It's not going to get us to six. It's not like it's increasing 400 times. If the problem had said um, the travel time increases by 400 times or four times, then we would get to six. Cross that one off. So as I do this model drawing, I'm slowly brought into the problem and I understand it and I can kind of at that point you know uh, eliminate it if it doesn't make match up to my six. Let's look at the correct answer here. It's number C. It says Maria has one and a half yards of rope. She wants to divide it into one, one fourth yards lengths. Okay, sorry, a quarter yards lengths. How many pieces of rope will she have? Well, let's start with this one. She has one and a half yards of rope. So let's draw that. Now this represents one and a half yards of rope. And then she divides it into quarter yard lengths. So it means she's dividing this, she's cutting it up into little quarter yard lengths. This is a quarter, this is a quarter, 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 a quarter. So each one of those little bits is a quarter. How many pieces of rope will she have? Well, she's got one little piece here, another one here, another one here, another one here. That's four in a yard, plus two more that are made up of the half yard. She gets to six little pieces of rope, six little pieces of rope that match up to the same answer as the previous one. In fact, um, I'll let you do D on your own. Team, um, model drawing is really helpful with problems like this. And I think uh, if you can do the model drawing, you'll be able to sort of with confidence identify that C is the answer. Sometimes if you can just do this one step and see the division by one-fourth is equal to multiplying by its reciprocal times four, that's also a critical step you have to make sure you see. All right. Okay, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.